Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Onward Technologies Limited Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Ms. Jyoti Gupta from EY Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Nero. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to Q4 and full year FY24 earnings call of Onward Technology Limited. The result and presentation have already been mailed to you and you can also view them on our website at www.onwardgroup.com. To take us through the result today and to answer your question, we have with us Mr. Jigar Mehta, Managing Director of Onward Technology Limited. We will start the call with the business update and financial performance for the quarter, which will be then followed by Q&A session. Uh, as usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for future or which can be construed at for, as a forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we see. These risks and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual report that you can view on our website. Having said that, I will now hand over the call to Mr. Jigar Mehta. Over to you, Jigar. Thank you, Jyoti. Hi, good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, I'm very happy to have all of you guys here today. Uh, we've had a fun day today um, at the board meeting, um, brainstorming with the entire board and going through all the numbers. And of course, our entire team was present. We review the performance of last year and plan for the subsequent few quarters and years ahead. I would quickly like to, uh, uh, to summarize some of the key highlights from the last 12 months and then the last three weeks, last three months, and then where we are going into the future. So for us, last year has been a transformative year. Um, I've shared that in the last three quarters, and I'm very happy to close it even on a much more stronger note. Uh, we simplified our entire org structure. We are now just focused on three industry verticals, industrial equipment and heavy machinery. Um, we have transportation and mobility, which includes both automotive and rail, and then we have healthcare and the med tech segment. All three verticals are primary verticals for us, all have significant opportunities uh, going forward, and uh, we believe all three have unlimited potential to grow over the next five to ten years. The last 12 months, we looked at the entire business in a very conscious manner and we said, okay, which are the areas that we need to address in the three verticals and the three horizontals? And we started with North America as the primary market, then Europe, and then India. And in each of these locations, we have started hiring people, uh, adding the right leaders, whether it's sales, account management, and or delivery. And we have started strengthening all the locations, geographic and very, very focused on the three verticals. And some exceptional talent, uh, exceptional subject matter experts, and a lot of our customers have started appreciating the kind of work that now that we are able to offer uh, to them. In addition to this, we strengthen some of our offshore infrastructure, uh, whether it is uh, Pune, um, Chennai, and then very soon, coming in July, we have a new office in Bangalore, in Whitefield, opening up. Uh, the reason why we constantly are building offices, one, we are growing, and second is our model is shifting from predominantly on-site driven to offshore driven, and a very, very good balance to it, which means we need more seats and more infrastructure, um, and to do that, we need to be in an A-grade building, A-grade tech box, which has all the data security, people security, and that is required for us to be successful. So very privileged that our cash flow situation, our uh, very strong management team, and a very, very supportive uh, board They're able to make quick decisions to get to that stage. Um, now, what we have done in the last 12 months, which I shared earlier, just reinforcing, um, all my direct supportees on the business side have now moved abroad. So uh, we have people in the U.S. and people in the U.K. from our management team. 
uh, who have all been with us and are very critical part of our success in the last five, six years and are now based locally in those markets. They are the same people who actually helped us build in their business in the past and now have gone there to build up Europe and U.S. respectively. Now, under, under each of these leaders, we are hiring local people. We are transferring many, many more people from our various India offices and amazing talent that is growing within the organization, whether it's in sales, whether it's in account management, whether it's uh, HR, finance, recruitment, and of course, uh, delivery, which is where 90% of the staff is. Now, coming back to the numbers, for the last 12 months, uh, I think all the numbers are the all-time high for us. In terms of revenue, we are growing from uh, 440 to 470 all crores, uh, which is 7% uh, uh, growth, 7% plus. I think we could have done much better if it wasn't for all the clients that we were exiting or the businesses that we were exiting where we did not see a very, very uh, high growth future. Our EBITDA, which I had shared earlier, as for a commitment, we were uh, from single digit EBITDA, we have now moved double digit EBITDA, and I think we close the year average at about 11%. Our PAT, again, very uh, important parameter, uh, has uh, a huge upside where we grew more than 194% or three times. We went from uh, 11 odd crores to uh, 34 odd crores uh, in the organization for the last 12 months. And because of the amazing performance and our improved, continuing improving quality of customers, quality of customer engagements, and hence quality of our margins, our cash reserves have now gone from 48 crores to about 93 crores uh, at the end of March 2024. Now, in terms of the verticals, industrial equipment heavy machinery continues to be our largest vertical and growing very well, and we see our amazing potential is at 52%. Transportation and mobility, which is where automotive is predominantly the largest vertical, and our veil is where we are investing, uh, contribute 37% of our revenues. And healthcare, which is our new uh, vertical, contribute about 8% of our revenue. Um, in terms of uh, DSO, which I already touched base upon, we had a huge improvement from 86 days to 72 days, and we still see a lot of opportunity for us to improve and uh, keep getting better in terms of how we engage and invoice the clients and how we connect much faster. Coming back to uh, Q4. We, um, as I another important point I've already mentioned was the number of quality clients that we have and the engagement that we have. We continue to evaluate that very, very seriously um, on, a, on, a, on a rigorous basis on, a, on every quarter. And while we added a lot of new customers, we also exited the bottom uh, 10, 15 customers. And now our active client roster has is down to a healthy 84. As I've shared earlier, I continue to believe our sweet spot is 75 for a company of our size, which is chopping its journey going towards 800 crore of revenue. And uh, I think that should be substantial in terms of uh, the opportunity that we play in and the opportunity that we can actually deliver uh, based on the cost structures that we have. Now for Q4, uh, our revenue uh, went back up from the dip that we saw in Q3 because of the furloughs and the holidays. Uh, we had about 818 crores, and our EBITDA margin was at 8.2 percent. And it was a bit lower than we expected because of several one-time expenses that we had in the quarter. We do expect to bounce back to double-digit EBITDA and constantly improving as we uh, move forward. Based on the performance, our board has recommended uh, this morning a dividend of uh, five rupees per equity share, the highest ever in our history and uh, marking it the ninth consecutive year of dividend payment, a payout subject to uh, shareholder approval at the upcoming uh, 33rd annual general meeting in July. In 2000 and, and now coming into the future, uh, for 2024-25 and going forward, we continue to remain very focused on growth. I think now it's a very good opportunity for us with very focused accounts a lot of high quality people already on board and continuously be adding a lot of depth around them. Uh, we get back to growth and we do believe we have an amazing opportunity as in all the three verticals, predominantly driven from uh, US, the biggest territories in Europe and then India. And uh, we hope to accelerate all of them very, very soon. Um, 
with our existing clients. To summarize, uh, thank you for the amazing support. Uh, thank you for the amazing support uh, to all our investors and analysts. Uh, thank you for, I want to acknowledge my entire team, which is now at 2,529 employees uh, globally. So if you see this compared from a year ago, uh, we've gone down by about 200 people. That's predominantly because of the large domestic volume business that we exited. So a big thank you to my entire team. A big welcome to so many amazing people that are joining us and uh, continue to be interested in our journey. And uh, of course, our customers for why uh, we are here recording the highest revenue in our history. And now I will hand over the floor to the operator to start the Q&A session. Thank you again. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star in one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. First question is from the line of Amresh Fakar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a good transformation. Uh, my first question is just to make sure I'm understanding the evolution of the revenue uh, appropriately. So if I exclude uh, the ITS revenue and only look at the ERND um, and digital revenue, we have grown by about 21% year on year. Is that uh, a reasonable way to look at the business going forward, uh, that that sort of level of growth will come now that we reduce the ITS to about 2%? Hi, good evening. Um, I'm not sure where you got that the definite number from, but we have been growing at that level, especially after uh, net, yeah. if you look at from the last three to four year perspective, absolutely, post the pandemic. Okay. Not coming down the future. I, I, I just got the number. Years, that's a reasonable number. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. I, I just got the numbers by using the approximation. Uh, it's, it's an approximate uh, number. Uh, second question, again, you know, I, I've just taken your percentages of uh, client revenue, top five client revenue, top 10 and top 25. If I just look at these uh, categories, the top five client revenue contribution seems to be growing quite strongly and uh, year over year. I'm just looking year over year number. I'm not exact, but it's my rough calculation says about uh, 25%. If the next five, so six to ten, is not growing as fast, but still growing, maybe fourteen percent. And the next fifteen, which is eleven to twenty-five, has actually degrown. Um, uh, is there some pattern here at the summit uh, that we seem to be doing really, really well in the top five, and perhaps the top next five, the six to ten, uh, is? something we, we we're going to try to focus on in addition okay fair understanding no, no great great observation so i'll simplify it for a bit so you know the, the um, one the list of our top 25 clients is not static it's not the same clients every quarter right because every time we add a new quarter as company of our size today compared to let's say three years ago the customer comes and we are winning much larger orders right so the numbers do change from that perspective so it's not the same list which was there uh, number two even in the top strategic clients some clients which were not growing very quickly or not didn't have the opportunity or did not have the outsourcing budget over the clients that we moved away from so if you see that number also has come down from 15 to about i think 13 or something right now but that many more are getting added as well so all the clients, for me, all 75 clients are strategic. I, I don't call it anybody more or really less. Uh, so just about at what maturity, mature state of engagement that we have with the customer. So in some places, and let me define my mature, how would I call it mature, where we already had 
uh, a local dedicated project office for the customer. We have subject matter experts and delivery leaders for all the three horizontals, which is digital, embedded, and mechanical. Now, in that, we have specialization, so we have that many more SMEs and architects supporting that customer. In addition to the whole execution engine, right, which is account managers, uh, delivery managers, engagement managers, HR, finance, and recruitment. For me, I call that a strategic client. So if you look at it from a 75 client perspective, it's not necessary that we are, you've invested so much behind all 75 customers. So it's a different level of where we are at. So to summarize, the customers that are growing very quickly, or which might be in the top five today, are where we are very mature engagement model. Right? Offices have said, teams are in place, investments have been made, licenses have been procured, huge investments have gone in training, uh, in infrastructure, and now it's more about execution and, and delivering for where the customers want us to build. Hmm. Am I simplifying it? I, I hope I'm... Uh, yeah, I think that's very helpful. No, that's, yeah. so that's very helpful. That's what yeah. our model is. If I can do that, if Onward can do that for all 75 clients, then that's the dream. But the, the, so that's where we are at. And that's what I said at the start of my uh, conversation, that consciously last year we strengthened a lot of these things instead of just focusing on growth, 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 which is what we did the previous few years. Okay. So just as a follow-up, if you could help understand this a little better, is this therefore a, a useful metric for us uh, to just keep tracking uh, like an average revenue per client? Is that, a, is that a good metric for us to see how, how it's uh, growing within each, each of these groups? So, so that's a great metric for us, definitely, because we're a bit of an anomaly where our revenues are going up for the last three years, and our headcount is coming down for the last three years. So definitely, that's a good metric for us uh, to track, and that's what we track internally as well. That can definitely use gross margin and the customers that have been growing every year. Um, and third for me is being a young company um, in my industry that we are in, we are in the, um, it's the quality of BSO as well. Because that's one way when you're working with the largest customers, when you do projects successfully, you get in paid ahead and better than always on time. I think those are small, small, very critical parameters uh, which helps us define where we are today. And at some point in time, once we reach our respective, much of, let's say, double the size of where we are, I think we can then start sharing more about our face funnels and the pipelines and the deal wins as well. Today, it's a bit sensitive because our customers don't want us to share that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, I'll jump back into the queue and all the best for FY25. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from Lionel Drusha from Ambika Fintrap Consultants. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Jigar, let me ask you this bluntly that, uh, and I'm going to give you some data points here. Your medical segment has not grown, has not gone anywhere for seven quarters now. Your heavy engineering has not gone anywhere for seven quarters now. Transport vertical has not grown for four quarters now. Uh, your headcount is down, if I see, to level of Q3 of FY22. So uh, where are, when are we going to see growth? Because if I go back uh, in Q2, in your transcript, you have said that we are a small com company, macro doesn't impact us. How are we going to achieve $100 million in FI26? For that, you have to do 31% CAGR for next two years. And I don't see how are you going to achieve that? Sure. Uh, thank you for the question. I, I think a lot of the facts are wrong. Uh, let me clarify some of the facts. Um, so the first fact is we have last... I think you said seven quarters, so let's say two years. I think we have grown from 270 crores or 300 crores to 470 crores. So we've seen a huge growth in the last so many quarters. Um, I don't have the exact specifics, but maybe I'm sure my team can pull it up in the next few minutes for me. So you've seen massive growth. Number two, I, I think you also clarified about some of the three verticals. Our entire revenue growth has come from the three verticals. We have grown substantially. What you are not seeing from the outside is the quality of clients that we have grown with. 
So we have moved from in the last three years, we have moved from 250 clients to 84 client engagements today. So we are moving in up the value chain with all our clients. And this is probably the best quarter we've had in onboard history. Um, right, because we have no other verticals today. Majority of our revenue comes from 98% of our revenues comes from um, the three verticals, right? Just 2% is IPS or others, which we also move away. Um, the third you mentioned about headcount, and that's a very good point, and I can clarify earlier as well. We, 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 our revenue growth is not linked to headcount. Please keep in mind, if you just look at onward today, 2,500 employees, 2,000 are invoicing in the Indian, um, in India, right, where we are invoicing in INR. And the balance about 350, 400 are invoicing in dollars. Both have seen substantial growth in the last seven or let's say two years. So for us, if I, and I, I've clarified that before, for us, the beautiful part, uh, Drew and why our margins are improving so beautifully and our cash flows are improving so beautifully and our uh, structure is improving is because when we are growing globally, our employees are amazing as, as engineers who are doing amazing work for customers in India are getting global career paths, right? So when we don't, we are not going in the market to hire people. We are taking people in India, let's say they're invoicing at five, six, seven, eight, ten dollars an hour, and they are moving to my international business where we are invoicing from eighteen dollars an hour to seventy-five dollars an hour if they're on site. So ours is not relative to headcount. I believe another one year we will still see headcount go down. Right? Like we just exited one large I'll, I'll actually I'll get to that point later. I'm just clarifying the fourth point on the healthcare side. So healthcare side, our actual revenues are going up, margins are going up, our quality of engagement are going up. And as we speak, we have just signed a Fortune 5, Fortune 50 company as a new customer. I'll get to that later. But we also have other large Indian customers, traditionally, which I've clarified in my earlier calls as well, that we have exited. So for example, we exited a large Indian customer um, end of April, where about 120 engineers moved away and we transitioned them to some other pay the customer chose. So that's a, that significant number of headcount will come down. Now in this client group, we were invoicing at uh, 4.5 to $5 an hour. Just to clarify, right? And I think we've shared these numbers before. So healthcare, this, the domestic revenue will become zero, which is the plans. Europe revenue will become zero. And in the healthcare segment, our revenues in US and Canada will start going up. And that's where the entire team is based out of Chicago. So I think they're doing a great job. They're building amazing momentum. Uh, we've just set up a new delivery center for them in Pune, uh, where we've got amazing new leadership. Uh, the inauguration was last quarter. So again, healthcare has that much of uh, potential. So just to summarize, headcount-wise, or overall scheme-wise, all the three verticals will grow, uh, we believe, I think, and they'll all grow towards uh, very healthy margins. I think today, if you look at our numbers, we have approximately 29% gross margin. I think where we need to be is at 35% gross margin. Uh, but that's because of utilization and some projects take off slowly. Um, and that's the stage we are in. Right? So just putting the facts out there. And just to the exact number, from 307 crores in the last eight quarters, we have gone to 472 quarters. So huge growth for a company of our size. And I'm very excited and very happy where we are. Yes, I have some data points that I want to share with you. can you hear us? Uh, sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, when I was coming, I have stated your, because uh, you did almost 67 odd crores in your heavy engineering vertical in Q2 FY23, uh, which today is 62.75 crores. You did, uh, in your automobile, you did uh, 41 crores in Q1 of FY24, and we are still there. And in medical, if I have to see, in Q2 of FY23, uh, you did 10 crores, and today we are at 8 crores. So when I'm seeing 7 quarters, I can't see any growth in your data points. Uh, I can have our IR managers at Ernst & Young come back to you with all the specifics. But again, uh, just to summarize, okay. what I just said was, it's the quality of engagements, right? Let's take an example of automotive. 
we had a transaction business which was doing about 20 crores a year revenue. We exited the entire thing. That is all. business which for us was called BIW, a manufacturing engineering group. So we exited the entire revenue. For the same services, which is robotics and virtual simulation and everything else, we are now supporting directly to our OEM customers. So from supporting large number of tier 3, tier 2, tier 1 autom automotive component suppliers uh, or automotive tier 1 companies, we are now supporting directly to the OEM. And that's what is creating a stickiness and the amazing visibility for the future. But I'm sure Ian Y can uh, come back to you with all the specifics. Even if I were to uh, put it across like that, out of 118 crores, how much of the revenue you still think is uh, you need to exit and the low margin uh, business for you? The one you did in this quarter. The only business that, so as of today, the only business, that I clarified at the start of the conversation, uh, the only business so that we had to exit, we exited in the paper. Right, which is 150 odd people, 100 people contract with a healthcare company, and about 40 odd people, actually 130 people with a healthcare company, and about 20 odd people with some other customers. Uh, so that 150 is over end of April. And now going forward, we don't have any such business that we want to exit or transition out of. And that's why we actually sent out an email internally as well last month that the entire transition is over in terms of people coming, people going. Now we can build from where we are. So it's a very exciting stage for us. Okay. Uh, Jivan, next question is on your digital space. Why is there so much of fluctuation in one quarter? How can you go from 46 crores of revenue to 23 odd crores of revenue? Uh, which is 50% uh, on quarter on quarter basis. Because the entire business that we exited was on the digital side. That was one reason. And second, is some projects must have ended and some projects will, must have, would be kept starting probably in Q1 or Q2. So again, for us, digital, embedded, mechanical, all three are growing, right? All three are important. It's the quality of the projects that we are trying to build. Um, and that's where predominantly, I think, the number must have come down probably at some this quarter. But you will see it bounce by the end this year if you average it out for 12 months. Okay, uh, and uh, just on your guidance of FI26, are you still maintaining 100 million? We believe we have an amazing opportunity. Uh, we've always said 100 million was a dream, uh, was an uh, aspirational target. And we still believe that the opportunities exist. We have to execute, we have to make sure we get the right people on board. And uh, if few things go our way, I think we can get there if closer, if not ahead, or where it will be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Lokesh. Lokesh from Tribe Capital, please go ahead. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. So in simple words, our performance has been quite disappointing on all parameters. Like we have been at the 120 crore revenue run rate for eight quarters now. And uh, our EBITDA margin has also come down from 11-12% range to 8%, which is after you sold your stake in December. As investors, how do we think about this company? And what comfort can you give us on growth and margins going forward? Hello? Yes. Um, I... Firstly, I think it was a very good quarter, uh, better than what we expected after what we saw end of Q3 uh, and early Q4. I thought the team did a phenomenal job and we bounced back. Every time margin came down because of one-off expenses that I clarified earlier. I think we have a beautiful run rate. Run rate. I think we have a superb team. Uh, I think we have an outstanding board, uh, uh, dream customers. And we are learning every day how to build better relationships, how to execute better, and how to build better. Right? And uh, what I believe, I, I don't think onward is made at, for daily, weekly, quarterly numbers. I think well, what we have achieved in the last uh, three years has been phenomenal. And I think the next three years, I think we can outperform the last three years. And that's the kind of opportunity that I see in front of us, what excites me when I come to office every day. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Bandon Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, uh, Jigar. Uh, so just a quick question. Given that you mentioned that most of your 
uh, low end revenues are pretty much behind you. Uh, what kind of growth are you expecting in this year in fiscal 25? We be having you ask this question every quarter which I speak to you. We don't give projections, but as I said, my simple goal that I work with since the day I got the job, and I think as long as I'll be here, is uh, to beat the previous quarter. Right? That's what we aspire to do. Um, and now, from the, as I said, we had a board meeting this morning. I, I think this year looks amazing as from where we are. Um, and we hope there are no one-off expenses also this year. That also will give a much better perspective to all of you guys from outside to see what we are doing inside, how hard the team is working. Um, but I do believe the next three years should be much better than the last three years. Right? Last year, we made the transformation journey started. Uh, we've gone from where we were to where we are today. And I think we should be able to accelerate much better going forward because we have the people, we have the customers. Now it's all about execution. Execution again, I mean, in US, Canada, and Europe. Yeah, no, I was not asking for the guidance. I'm just trying to get a sense given, you know, what the numbers have been in the last uh, few quarters. And, and, you know, every business goes through ups and downs, so we all understand that. I'm just trying to get a sense that now that we have shedded the business you don't want, right, we seem to have a, now a base of this, let's say, 470 crore revenues, right? Now, as you are penetrating the accounts more, uh, should we expect 30% growth or should we expect even higher? So if you can just give, you don't have, I'm not asking for a number per se, but directionally, you know, what is the kind of growth aspirations you have so that all of us who are on the outside, as you said, uh, can I get a little comfort from the uh, way the business is likely to grow over the next year. So, so that's really what, where the question is coming from. No, no, absolutely. Great question. As I said, my, I, I have two focus areas. One is double digit EBITDA, and I want to improve the EBITDA margin next year from where I am today to where onward is today, and I think we should be much ahead next time. Just if I just take up one of expenses, we'll be better off already. And, and that's what I would love to maintain. Never happened in onward history, but I think I have built a team which has the capability to execute. So that's one. And from a revenue perspective, as I said, for me, uh, the potential is enormous. I am not a daily weekly guy, uh, but I do believe this year should be phenomenal, much, much better than last year. And I think it's all about executing and things falling into place at the right time. You know, it's fun winning all the big deals in Q1 is roughly three, right? Because then you get the advantage of the whole year. And that's what we are seeing as we go about today. Got it, got it. That's helpful. And then just very quickly, the second one, talking about the deal win, uh, how is the pipeline looking, you know, in terms of compared to last year, what kind of confidence you have that... Sir, sorry to interrupt uh, you. you. May I request you to speak a little louder, please? Yeah. Is it better now? Uh, yes. Hello? Yeah. So what I'm saying is that, you know, what is the deal pipeline looks like to you, given you know, the deal that you just mentioned? Uh, how uh, how much stronger is it, let's say, compared to last year's impact? So, VP, our, our whole world has changed from April 1st, right? Because we all are fresh. There's nothing for us to move away from anymore. Uh, it's better and bigger than we've ever seen. I continue to maintain that. Uh, let me just clarify, I don't mean deal wins. I mean the opportunity from our existing clients. Um, and they are counting on us every day. We are on calls, meetings, planning how to do something better. Just to clarify again, we have a customer, let's give you an example, we have an amazing customer in US, they want us to expand into UK, or we have a customer in UK, we have to expand in Canada. It's a very new way for us to work, we are not used to that, right? Some of the larger companies have done that 10, 15, 20 years ago, so we are learning that whole thing, adding the right people everywhere, uh, and the potential is enormous. We recently re-signed three of our customers that we had lost uh, pre-pandemic or much before that, seven, eight, ten years ago. They came back to us saying, you're hearing great all customers in the U.S. We are hearing great things about you guys from so many places, and, you know, we would love to re-engage with you guys. And these are huge companies on the industrial side. So, again, very, very privileged for that as well. 
So, you know, it's like a little, like, it's just a mode of confidence where old customers come back. We, we lost them several years ago with the assumption that you guys are not aspirational and you guys are not able to invest on the embedded side or the digital side or whatever it was at that point in time. And now they're coming back to us. So it's all about scaling with them. So, so to summarize, it's better than ever before. Okay, great. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sri Ram Ranjan, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you. Uh, hi, Jigar. Uh, hope you're doing great. Um, so uh, I, this is uh, invest. Actually, I'm just adding on top of the question. Uh, another investor asked maybe prior to VP or maybe two prior to that, where you responded saying your business is perhaps not people based or the number of people based, but given that it's a TNM contract that you're signing, I think there will be some level of uh, linearity involved, isn't it? So the um, question is, uh, given these are all TNM and you sign long-term MSA with the customers, I presume, do you have a sense of the demand for this year? Is it going to be more than 2,000, or the billable resources perhaps is 2,300? Is it going to be more than that? If, if yes, then by how much uh, could you could you just share those details? Uh, Sri Ram, good evening. I don't have the details, but I'm sure Ian e Y can come back to you with all the specifics that you need. That's so not a parameter just... that really we look at internally. So I, I can tell you where we are today in terms of headcount, and maybe you guys can calculate your way. We are about 2,450 as we speak today. This is yeah. after the exit and the new hires. So I think where we should be at 27, 2800 is a good sweet spot for us. Um, and I would like majority of that to be outside India, not necessarily in India. Okay. Just for clarity, Jigar, maybe you could, you've, just, you've told us a few times earlier as well, but uh, if, if he had to hit a 100 million, which is a dream number, maybe FY26, uh, currently, let's assume 2,300, 2,400 are contributing to 470 crores. Uh, would you would you consider would the same 2,300 I'm saying billable resources deliver the 800 crores as well, or the 100 million, or we need to add at least 500,000 more resources? In an ideal world scenario, I think majority, and I said onward, as will be about 150, 180 people outside India today. Okay. If I can take that up to 300, we are there. Plus minus. Right? Okay. okay. That, that helps. We were actually we're looking at it differently then. Okay. So, we are not an offshore company. I've always said that. We are not a company focused on the India market only. Plus, we are in a market where there are very large established players, large established relationships. We are not entering those customers. We are going after customers where don't have an India presence or they have an India presence looking for a new young company um, who can provide the flexibility and the agility and the speed and, of course, competitive rates. So we are playing in a very different sweet spot. So for us, if a customer wants us to ramp up 100 people in California, that's my dream project. I will move all my best people there. Okay, so maybe, uh, so then I understood it differently. $25 million, yeah. No, no, sorry, I, I think then, there is no need for another thousand to come on board. Maybe that was the kind of understanding I had earlier. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, this is like you said just before. This is not a daily, weekly business. You're not doing product sales, or this is not a distribution business. So I get it. So I'm sure you you already have an exact more or less to the 5% variance a view of one edge. Uh, do you see green shoots that we say, yes, there's a far better growth for the first half compared to what it was last year? So Q2, I was, I was told by my uh, sales team or by my senior team that Q2 usually is a very good quarter. I, again, for me, that's more IT cyclical business. I think in ERMD, I have not seen that, at least in my customer discussions. Every quarter is important for them from an innovation perspective, from an R&D perspective. 
or if they're just moving work from Europe, US to India. I think it's all about execution. Um, end of Q2 to early Q3 is usually the holiday period in Europe. So we do get affected by some of these uh, cyclical things. But for me, again, when I look at the pipeline, I think it's all about executing and where to prioritize. We have 75 customers, we just need 10 customers to win. 10 customers, which can get to $10 million a year. Right? So for us, it's that. I mean, it sounds very simple today because I've been saying it for three years. Uh, three years back, nobody believed me we get 470 crores. I think then we were some 150 or 200 crores of revenue. But we are on that journey, and I think a lot of our customers are growing. We have luck. I think we have now three, four, five customers, about three or four million dollars already, if not much more. So we're getting to that stage. But so just to summarize, my sweet spot, onward sweet spot is can we get to 10 customers, which can get to 10 million dollars a year. Yeah. Right. So it can happen any quarter, any day, any week. It's all about just being at the right place and committing and delivering to our commitments to our customer. Yeah, sure. So, sure, Jira, just to be you, just look at it. You run the business, so you you far more closer to details, which we we don't see from outside. So, if we have to form an assessment, saying, okay, this is on the right trajectory, like you said, the next two years will be better than the previous two years. So. The last two years we've grown 300 to 470 or 370 to 470, which is a reasonable good growth, 50 percent plus. So you're saying it will be better than that two years from now. But I just for the next six months, can we consider there's going to be a far better beta and uh, top line performance compared to the first half of last year? That's the goal. That's what we work hard every day. Thank you, Jiro. Wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lana Pratik Podda, individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Just one question. In terms of moving your India billing to global billing, uh, are you suggesting FY25 is the pivotal year where we'll see substantial movement from India to global and, and the share of India business or the revenue from, from India will, will go down? Is that a fair understanding? Uh, I think every year has been fundamental for us, right? There's no year or quarter which is better. Uh, we've been transitioning this for a long time because our customers are U.S. and Europe headquartered, and they would like at least 10% or 20% of the key team members next to them in the premises or in project offices right next to where they are based. So we are aiming to do that every year. Uh, the opportunity is much bigger today than yesterday, absolutely, because the global mobility or immigration, as I call it, has opened up. Right? U.S. was shut for us till about last year, and now U.S. is open, so we have people moving to U.S. Uh, Canada, which was taking six, nine months, 12 months, is now taking three to four months only. Uh, Germany is still three to six months, and we hope it goes down to one month. Uh, so, you know, it's all about that whole opportunity. Opportunities are there. It's all about we just not getting the work permits at the speed that we would like it. So can I say two years? Is two years a fair understanding? Maybe not FY25, but H2 of FY25 and starting of FY26 where we start seeing this mix. Because yeah, that's absolutely. your gross margin improvement and growth, right? That's what you're hinting towards. Uh, no, I, I, would, I would say a little bit more. It's key to improving a customer engagement because I cannot take up a big project unless I have my key people at the client site or next to the client. Right. So what happens is, uh, is once we win the project, or once we get selected for a large project, uh, pro program managers or project managers or subject matter experts move to the next to a customer or in that country on a local work permit. We cannot just hire people in the market for these critical positions. And traditionally, Onward has never done that. So because we have an amazing team of 2,500 people, so it's about taking our people who are part of the proposal stage of the big defense stage who move abroad and move the client side to deliver that. Then the offshore starts, right? So it's always, let's say, uh, you have three people on site and maybe 30 people offshore. That's where your margins improve. So that's not the real game. The real game is can you transition this client small project or a project that we have into a $10 million engagement year on year for life for as long as you can do that and become an important R&D partner or an extension of a client's R&D department. That's the real key. So then you're really adding value to the customer. Everybody can go in today, do a project based on 
India opportunity or India supply chain or low cost. Or can we actually build it to a sustainable revenue model is what we are working towards. Build it, so thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ashish from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. So this is this was more from a general industry perspective. So we are reading this uh, GCC data and uh, the kind of people that these those guys are hiring. So one of the reports recently stated that 74% of the total demand is getting absorbed by GCC. Uh, would you be worried on this kind of a data which is thrown away because there's this kind of an understanding which goes that uh, GCC is trying to do uh, some of the work in house. And eventually, uh, you know, the growth for the outsourcers, outsourced vendors will uh, be lower than what uh, people might be projecting for. Your comments on this would be very helpful. I, I think it's uh, very, very positive actually for a young company like Onboard, or actually in general for the industry. Right? Large global companies coming into India, they, when they set up their own shop, uh, they will hire their own people. I think that's a basic assumption. We do the same when we go to Europe and the US. We can outsource all the work. We only outsource the low end work. So when they come in and they ramp up teams of 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, or even now companies are going towards 20,000 people as well, I think it's superb opportunities for India. Um, just as a, as a general thing. Onboard technologies traditionally has never played in that space, right? We have never helped GCCs, actually I'm talking about for most last three years. We have never been the company which is helping GCC set up shop in India. We are not the company doing BOP models. We are not we have not been so far. And we've definitely not been uh, affected by that so far. But more and more American and European companies come to India, set up huge shops, are successful, can innovate, can create IP. That means other companies, again, please keep in mind, I don't know the exact statistic today, but less than 20% of the global companies in my three verticals that onward is playing is today has a GCC in India. My focus is other 80%. Hmm. Fair enough. Right. And for your business in particular, like, uh, what are the key growth areas that you would um, envisage? So obviously auto is one vertical wherein you guys are building your uh, force. Uh, but apart from that, off-highway vehicles or to that extent aerospace, um, uh, what is the industry reading and uh, uh, where is more, most of your energy or focus is currently? So three areas. Uh, in addition to what you already said, on what is not in the aerospace sector. Uh, one moment. Ashish, may I request you to mute your line, please, when you're not asking your question? There's a bit of echo from your line. Sure, yeah. Thank you. So, so, so we have three good. verticals, Ashish. We have industrial equipment, which includes off highway vehicles, off road vehicles, heavy machinery, mining, construction equipment. That's one vertical, which is a very, uh, it's a very large vertical with a lot of sub verticals. We are, that's a big focus area for us. Automotive, of course, rail, of course, and healthcare, like that. But that's one side of the story. The other side of the story, which is a real, Game changer for us for the last three years has been when we pivoted from just a pure play mechanical engineering services company to software, both on the embedded side and digital side. And embedded software and digital side is where the biggest opportunity for us is. We are still, as a company, scratching the surface. Uh, our teams have done a phenomenal job so far to where we are at. So I think we can do much, much, much more. And that's where the large RFPs are, and that's where the large deals are, and that's where the large. Uh, demand in today and will be for the next three to five years. Software includes AI, ML, cyber security, data, I mean everything, data analytics, everything on the software side. Keep in mind onward pre-pandemic will only be a mechanical engineering company. Yeah, and, and lastly, like uh, at some point in time, most of the OEMs uh, will come to India. Like, we are aware that Winfast is already setting up facility in India. For all those EV players, be it German origin or possibly some of the Japanese guys who might potentially want to enter India, um, as far as our business development efforts are concerned, uh, are the teams, that, is there a se kind of segregation between domestic and the international business development guys or uh, how is it working currently? Uh, again, great question. Thanks for asking. So our where we are today from April 1st, 2024, we have no sales team in India. We have a very strong execution team. 
and we are continuously building on that. We have an account management team, which every account has one, two, three named account managers based on the scale or the opportunities or the technical competencies required. Our entire sales team led by Vignesh, who is the executive vice president, and uh, by my global management team. He's moved to Michigan. He's building a team around there. From his father, who's again executive vice president, part of the management team that moved to London. He's building a whole team in Europe. And similarly, our whole sales organization is going to be only in the US and Europe. Of course, we have the lead gen and the pre sales and everybody else offshore in India and our various offices. But the key guys, key client engagement guys, and they are building an amazing team. They hire some super people, and I think they will hire tons and tons more in the next uh, two, three years, starting today. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow up question is from the man of Sri Ram Ranjan from Individual Investor. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you. Uh, Jigga, any plans for uh, acquiring companies in the uh, in the high end space that you're talking about in the uh, digital or uh, embedded? On the uh, so on the MA side, nothing concrete as of today. We haven't. Uh, there's nothing that we are actively discussing. But as I've always said, we are very open. We have the cash. We have. A uh, very strong uh, PE partner in converging. Um, so it's never been the challenge. It's more about finding the perfect company which is supporting our clients instead of again adding 20, 30 new clients. So that's not that's just a prioritization for us. We're always open for it. Okay. Thank you, Jigo. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow up question is from Lana from Bish Kakar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, this is more of a bookkeeping question. Uh, you, you mentioned at the beginning of the call something along the lines that there are a few one-offs in this quarter. Is there something more you could share on that? Uh, just absolutely. So the one-offs are all employee-related, and I think it's just uh, employee-related expenses which were uh, came up because we are a strong player and the management team and the board approved it. Nothing really. Uh, you only have two expenses, right? The payroll and travel. You don't really have much after that. So it's just about those things. And the magnitude of the one off, you said. No, no, it was one off into these things, yes. We can share the breakup, of course, Ian, I can give you all the breakups uh, line item wise. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Chigar Mehta for closing comments. Thank you. Again, thank you everybody for joining on a Friday evening. I uh, really appreciate the time and support. Uh, as I said, we are committed. We, had, we think we had a good year and we can always do better. But I uh, would just like to assure everybody we have built an amazing team. Uh, very excited about the future. I think this year it looks it's very exciting as well. We are going back to execution, and I think that's the key for our success for the next two, three years. So thank you again, and have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much. On behalf of Onward Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.